And here is an example, the soccer ball. So the soccer ball is a calligraph of on the group A5. Uh, and we have 12 uh, five counts and other places are hexagons. These are two T guns uh, hexagons here because here uh, T is equal to three. And so we have a Cayley graph. In this case, the, the, the graph can be embedded in, uh, onto a sphere. Then we color the hexagons, the two T cons, and then we make the, uh, this quotient graph, and we end up with the vertical okay? And what we do next? In the dodecahedron, <coughs> we uh, search for an independent set of vertices whose complement uh, is a forest. Okay? And then we look this complement of the independent set of vertices in the original graph. So we can go back, <coughs> we, can we can color the hexagons uh, that corresponds to the vertices lying on the forest. And as you can see in the picture on the top, uh, we get a forest of faces. And the boundary of these forest of faces uh, are even sideways. Okay? This is a consequence that we have two T dots. Everything is even. And we can simply use two colors to color color the edges lying on the boundary of this uh, porous faces uh, and the third color for the edges not lying there. Okay. Uh, when we were using this method for the Hamiltonicity problem, uh, we were not searching for the forest in the complement, but for a tree. Uh, because in, in case that this uh, we can found an independent set of vertices here, whose complement is uh, a tree, then when we go back, we get in the original graph a tree of faces, whose boundary is a chemical sign. Okay. Uh, and here it's a description of the method that I explained on the picture. Uh, for, as I said before, for t equal to 3, this method uh, was uh, used to prove the existence of the Hamilton cycle uh, in almost all the cases. And uh, we used also the really nice result of Pay and Sakarovic, for friends. <laughs> it, it, the paper is in French. It's the only paper that I read. This is in French, not in English, from 1975. Uh, uh, and that paper was about cyclic edge connectivity, but these are things that I will not mention here. And uh, in, as you were able to read in the abstract, uh, the important thing is nearby perfect graphs. And in fact, the graphs that are such that they have an independent set of vertices whose complement is a forest are called here by okay. So uh, there are just some examples with independent sets of and forest in the complement. Okay. And then if we go back, uh, we go further, so the next step is that this would be four. Uh, in this case, we are aware of three examples of graphs that can occur as disclosure graphs that are not nearby perfect. But these three graphs are really small and the existence of a non smart in the that that the the K, the corresponding K graph is not snark can be proven in a, a different with a different method. And the question is if are there other such graphs? If there are other such graphs, then our method will not be enough to prove the conjecture. And uh, to answer this question, the following problem needs to be considered first. So classify paper valent arc transitive graphs with chromatic number four, admitting to a one regular subgroup with the cyclic process of the isom. Paper that we submitted for this uh, 
sitting. Uh, we didn't proceed with T equal to 4 or 5 and so on, but we used a different concept. We uh, studied the bicirculant. Uh, bicirculant is uh, a graph that admits an uh, MN semi-regular morphism. Uh, for example, the Peterson graph is a bicirculant because you have an automorphism in a Peterson graph that has uh, two orbits. Okay? And uh, we consider these bicirculants, which are prime valent, are transitive, and are acting one regularly on the, on the graph. Uh, why these restrictions? <coughs> these restrictions because uh, only such graphs can occur as the quotient graphs of a Cayley graph. And we proved that all such graphs are near bipartite. And there are infinitely many such graphs. Uh, and as a consequence, we, we have that a cubic 2SQ Cayley graph on a group uh, where Q is a prime. Uh, and such that the corresponding uh, two Q gonal quotient graph uh, is a G bicirculant uh, is not a star. So it's a really uh, specific result, but it is uh, still proves the existence and uh, not that it proves the non-existence of infinite. I still have two minutes. Okay, I, I, I was, sorry, I, I wrote two minutes. Okay. <laughs>